Good morning. How are you today? Happy Wednesday, um, August 23rd. Um, these days are just cruising right along, aren't they? Um, I hope you're having a good week. Um, actually, yesterday, I was so happy that today was Thursday. Guess what? It's not. It's Wednesday. I was like, aw, dang. I thought we were more than halfway through. Anyway, got my coffee. Looking at my little pineapple this morning. Such a cute little thing. Got to remember to get my crown on and keep my crown on for Jesus. Keep it up there, sister. Keep it up there. We're still, we're still going, right? We're still hanging out for Jesus, being the light in the darkness. Um, we are in chapter four in, uh, in our book uh, by Brad Bigney, Gospel Treason. And chapter four is so long. I might have to break this up in a couple of lessons. Uh, there's so much good stuff in here. It's called Idolatry Wreaks Havoc in Your Relationships. And boy, do we know that, right? Um, it takes us to James 3.16. So if you got your coffee or your soda or your phone or your Bible, get your Bible out, girlfriend. Guys, spend some time with Jesus. Um, I have some funny stories for you today. Um, of course, I'm on my phone, aren't we all? Which I really do not like, but it is habits of downtime and you really don't have to think, right? So I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I look in my way and I look in our waiting rooms at both of our offices and and here are the people scrolling, scrolling, scroll. I mean, dude, what are in these phones that are so attractive to us now that we don't just sit there? Actually, I did see a woman the other day reading a book and I thought, you go, girl, you go, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get away from these electronics and these phones. But nonetheless, we talked about our um, feeds, right? even on Facebook or wherever that they're listening to us is so funny. Uh, some things that come up in my feed is living in a van, tiny houses, um, possibly some coach uh, purse advertisements or sales, especially the sales, right? Um, uh, shoes, clothes, sweaters, dresses, purses, right? At any time you're on a site, then that feed is going to come up more and more and more and more saying, buy me, buy me, buy me. Just push the, push the button. You know, what's so scary about Amazon is, is, and, and Delta, they have your credit cards right in them. So all you got to do is hit buy, buy, <laughs> buy. Scary. I mean, it's scary, right? Um, it's so funny though, the other day, and you know, I have been thinking about this for years is I wanted to take uh, all my granddaughters to go make a, make chunky blankets. And I was looking at that place in Northville and they were so expensive. I was like, I, I can't do that. That would be a hundred dollars per child. I always wanted to do that though. Guess what came up on my newsfeed like two days ago, how to make a chunky blanket. I was like, dude, I wanted to make a chunky blanket for so long. That is crazy. Um, so guess what y'all getting for Christmas next year? <laughs> it's going to take me a minute to figure out how to make them, but everybody's getting a chunky blanket. <laughs> anyway. I just thought that was so funny. Um, anyway, let's get on with our lesson today. Um I don't know if everyone saw a picture of Jolene uh, the other day on Facebook. Uh, last Saturday, Sam and I had, I had made a grooming, um, they call it grooming, um, appointment for Jolene because her long, beautiful hair that was orange and white had all of these knots underneath under her underbelly because her hair is so long and she won't let us 
um, sit there and brush her. Like she'll let us brush her for a little bit, but then she's like, okay, I'm done. You're not doing this anymore. And so those knots in her hair were so big, um, really, truly. And she just walked around the house going, hair, 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 hair. And it was absolutely driving my husband crazy. Um, so I'm trying to make everybody happy. Um, anyway, we drove to Taylor and went to this uh, Positively Perfect. I think that was the name of that place. Um, and uh, we had given her some gabapentin ahead of time so she would be nice and relaxed because Jolene does have an attitude. And um, we stayed with her the whole time because we didn't know these people and we knew that she was going to be very anxious and afraid. And uh, she does look like a lion now, <laughs> which I know she's a girl, but... She is so cute. Um, it absolutely, it actually changed her personality too. I don't know if she was afraid we were going to leave her there um, or what, but we stayed with her. We we petted her. We, um, we were kind hearted. There is one picture though, where she has her little legs like this and both of the ladies are holding her and they're trying to shave the rest of the hair off. Oh my gosh, that picture. It makes me feel sad, even though we did it for her benefit. So, um, I do love her. So, um, anyway, she looks very cute as a little lion. <laughs> so that was exciting. Um, as we go, as we get in our book, cause look, we're, we're losing time here this morning. Let's go to James three sixteen, And then it has us in Ecclesiastes. This lesson is just so good and really, truly just hits home with us all, um, you know, God doesn't look at our outside. He doesn't look at the outside of us, even though we like to work on that and, and try to keep ourselves, um, you know, healthy and looking well and doing your hair and doing your makeup. And he looks at your heart, doesn't he? And that's where we have the problem with idolatry is right in our heart. And that's why Ladies, it's so important to keep that heart cleaned out because as we're walking in the world, there's just so many battles and just so many battles. Um, our heart gets pulled in so many different directions. Uh, truly, we need to keep them cleaned out, reminding ourselves what what the story is, what what is our life about. Um, what is our mission? What are we here for? Correct? James 3.16 says, James 3.16 says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. <clears throat> um, Brad says, nothing but God will satisfy your heart, and yet your heart, heart is prone to idolatry. That's the universal condition and universal dilemma. Uh, but by now, I hope you've begun to take the concepts I presented and apply them to your own life. What are your heart? What are the idols of your heart? Do you know yet? Um, we all have different idols that um, we are challenged with. Um, and it's a lot of hard work. Plus, you need to pay attention because each one of us are different, right? Right says most of the time, God has to show us our idols. We don't usually see them on our own. Think about it. If you knew what they were, you probably would have dealt with them by now. Have you been praying Psalms 139, 23, and 24? Ooh, let's go there real quick. Psalms 139. We know these, don't we? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Um, is that a scary prayer when you say that to God? Are you really asking him to do that? He says, um, he says one of the places where chaos shows up more quickly and most painfully is in our relationships with those closest to us, husband, wife, kids, parents, co-workers. They are the ones who bear the brunt of our idolatry while we think they're only causing us trouble and getting in our way. They're frustrating us. They're blocking us. They're not helping us get what we want. Have you ever felt this way or had any of these thoughts toward those around you? 
especially those closest to you. Here, I want to read what Paul Tripp writes. And um, they talk about a book in here that Paul Tripp wrote. I don't know if I can find it, but if I ever find it, I'll try to let, let you all know that on here. Um, Healing Hearts had us read. Oh, here. Paul Tripp wrote um, a book called Instruments in the Redeemer's Hand, and it's a very big book, and Healing Hearts had us read it. Oh, my word. One of these days, we might have to do a Bible study of that book section by section on here, but not for today. Anyway, Paul Tripp writes, do you have any conflict in your life? Do you experience moments of extreme irritation towards someone you otherwise love? Are there people who simply push your buttons more than others? Do certain things drive you crazy on a daily basis? Why does it seem that people, things, and situations are in our way? Why do we seldom go through a day without some experience of conflict? The answer to all these questions is that we think our lives are our own. And we are more committed to the purpose of our own kingdom than we are to God's. We need to recognize that the people in our way have been sent to us by a wise and sovereign king. He never gets a wrong address and always chooses just the right moment to our, expose our hearts and realign them. Hmm. Think about that, girlfriend. Oh, how I wish I could tell you this is not true, but it is. According to the scripture, God never gets a wrong address. Always chooses the right moment to expose your heart, not just to afflict you or whip on you, but to expose your heart so that can, he can realign it to his. Until there is an exposure, there's no chance for realignment, but often that exposure takes place in the context of some painful conflict with another human being you're living with in close contact with. So the process itself is anything but fun, and we never think it's a good time to have our hearts exposed and realigned. Our first reaction is, but God, this is the absolute worst time in my life for this to be happening. This new boss is coming down on me. This roommate is grating on my nerves. This new marriage is demanding far more of me than I expected. Don't you see everything else going on in my life? Not this, not now. It's funny how he says, let's go to Romans 8.28. As we like to stand in, in Sunday school, he says, and quote this, but we don't want it to really be us, right? Um, how many times do we have real problems and real issues and we, we don't show the real, our real selves? And I'm not saying that you have to show your real self or your real life to everyone, but we also don't want to be these fake people that act like life is just fine. How can we help others if we never, never share our burdens um, and the things that weigh heavy on our heart? It says, Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Right? Um, Ecclesiastes seven fourteen, and I held that in my Bible. And you know what's funny is, ha, I love to challenge myself, is I remember where Ecclesiastes is now because I had to look it up one time. So now I'm going, oh, I know where that is. So I hope you challenge yourself to do the same thing. Um, Ecclesiastes seven fourteen says, and I love, 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 love this. Get there with me. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. He says, he says this, the conflict that you're facing right now with the people in your life is a divine appointment. That's right. It didn't just happen. It was on God's calendar. Sometimes those things... Um, are very hard too that we're dealing with. Um, it says God's timing is perfect. God never gets a wrong address and he never chooses the wrong moment to expose your heart for the purpose of realigning it to his. It's like developing film. God already knows what tomorrow looks like. We don't, do we? And that's why when I say, sister, we got to hold on to Jesus and trust him and trust him and trust him and say it over and over again to yourself. Um, that's not for Jesus. That's for us. I want to read um, 
it says, it says, Dave Harvey quotes John Bettler as saying, your spouse always hooks your idol, but marriage didn't simply hook my idols. It hoisted them six feet in the air and toweled them around the house. I can't tell you how many times I thought, I've never had these problems before. This must be my wife's fault. The truth is I'd always be a, been a blame shifter. It's just that after getting married, there were so many good opportunities to express this fault. So how many times do we put our problems on our spouse? Hmm. And how many times are we so busy all day and then we're tired and we're frustrated and we just want to come home and have no distractions and no problems, right? no issues. We just want to sit there and be in our own little world, probably scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on your phone or looking at a TV, not really like thinking, right? And if you're like me, you're watching Andy Griffith, maybe, or Swamp People. I don't know. Um, it says, it says the head on collision with that other person is just flushing out the idols of your heart, stirring them up, sifting them out, that's good, and I don't say so lightly. Um, he talks about having children, um, and sometimes it seems like there's a whirlpool in his home. Uh, he says, I've been shocked with the things that come out of my mouth, things that I've been forced to trace back to my heart. It's been a wake-up call, a sledgehammer for self-deception, because we're always thinking we do better than we really, we, we're doing better than we really are. God loves us enough to pick the perfect time to smash our pious platitudes, to strip us of our self-righteous notions and leave us standing before him naked, embarrassed with our unruly idols. I do have a funny story about this. Um, you know, a lot of times in life, we go through so many difficult things and we, we do wonder if it's Jesus and we wonder what his plan is for these things, don't we? Um some very difficult things that we go through, right? And so it's so important to keep our hearts uh, not only cleaned out before Jesus, but to hang on to him and tell him how much we love him, even in the midst of the controversy, even, even in the midst of all the things that are going on that are so hard that we can never understand. Our Jesus loves us. He died for us. And still life is very unfair. Um, we did go to a funeral last night and um, it had been a long day, of course, at work. And so we got home from the um, that funeral and um, I, I was sitting on the couch and I actually asked my husband, did you water the plants? And he's like, no, I, for I forgot. And I was just like, well, I'm not watering them because I just had a really long day and you were home all day. And then we went inside and I didn't want to do the cat litter or the food either. And my husband actually went and did that, even though he had said he had never done it because that was my job. But then, and so I was so thankful for that, right? But then we're sitting on the couch and guess who got out cucumbers and ranch? <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, do not say anything. Do not say anything. Do not say anything. I love Sam. I love Sam. I love Sam. <laughs> It's time to go to bed then when you can't say anything because you don't want to say anything you're going to regret. Even when he's chewing rant, uh, cucumbers and ranch dressing right in your ear. I love you, girlfriend. This is your challenge for today. Grab your coffee. I'm going to have two mugs. We can do this. I love you.